Hey everybody, today I want to talk about finding your tone and uh, it's going to help you to figure out how you should be singing when you're recording, how to tap into more of your voice instead of tapping into you know the mimicry of other people or, or controlling your voice as you're hearing it and things like that. So uh, if you want to learn more about this kind of thing and finding your voice, finding your tone, all that kind of stuff, I'm going to give you some advice here. Uh, come along and we're going to chat about it. All right, so I had originally planned on doing um, a walkthrough of Don't Stop Believing today, but if you can hear it, my voice is uh, not uh, completely working this morning. <clears throat> Tried to warm up and do some things, and uh, sometimes some stuff works better than others, but uh, I had a, a pretty significant show on Sunday where I was singing a lot, so it could be that. Uh, you never can tell, but uh, sinuses, acid reflux yesterday um, that came out of nowhere, you never know. Anyway, so I decided to talk about this. Now, one of the reasons I decided to talk about this is because one of the main things that I keep trying to get through to most of my students, and uh, apologies if you've heard this before and you're one of my students, <laughs> but one of the main things that I'm always trying to relay and plant into um, students' heads is this process of feeling it before you're just processing hearing it. And what I mean by that is that I'm trying to teach people how to sing instead of how to listen to themselves making sound and then control that, manipulate that. What that means is that you're trying to utilize the body like an instrument, and I'm trying to teach you ways to do that. And I'm trying to mostly plant seeds in your mind so that you become conscious of the subtleties and, and you're aware of what's happening in the body, the mouth, the throat, the neck, the diaphragm, the breathing, all these things. You're putting those pieces together so that you're, you're focusing on this and you're processing it like uh, an engine that's running or a, a vehicle that you're driving instead of, once again, just listening to it and be like, I don't know if I like the way it sounds, <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. Now, once again, keep in mind that most of the people I, I train, and myself included when I started, um, <clears throat> are mostly just operating, trying to hear the way they sound through a mic, through, without a mic, through a PA, whatever, and then they're trying to manipulate that. And what comes along with that for most humans is all this vulnerability and ego and do I sound good and I don't know if I'm good enough and all this kind of stuff just keeps coming out of nowhere and just making it heavier and heavier and it can take the joy out of singing. And then some people have no idea what the hell they're doing and they're having the greatest time. Anyway, most people that I train are very, very self-conscious of this stuff. And like I said, when we come down to the truth of it is that they don't actually really know much about actual singing. So they're not really doing much other than kind of speak singing or being loud and making sound. But then, like I said, they don't really know what's going on. So we're going to try to tap into a little bit of that here. And I want to give you a little bit of advice when it comes to recording or recording your own songs or singing live through a you know a microphone and things like that that might help you to tap more into your voice more into your golden zone more into your uh, natural tonality etc so that you can kind of find that and then run with that instead of it just being like I think that part sounded good and that part didn't <laughs> so <clears throat> without going through all the pieces of this we're going to just mention this, and of course, I have plenty of videos on breathing and support and things like that. Keep in mind, if you're trying to develop this stuff and you have not put much time and effort into breathing correctly or supporting correctly, you're going to have increasingly more difficulty finding your tonality. As you listen to my voice right now, since I was trying to warm up and having some issues today, uh, you can hear that kind of coming through. That could be considered a pleasing, hopefully, <laughs> or a warmth in tonality that's coming through. And as I speak, you're hearing the same kind of sound like this come through. Sort of the same thing that happens when we're singing. When we find a tone like that, a lot of times that's more of what our body or what our palate or what our everything kind of wants to do in terms of resonance. So we like to find that and stick with it and run with it. But I will have trouble finding that nicer tonality unless I'm a deeper voiced uh, person like that. <clears throat> Especially for females, we'll have trouble finding that and guiding that 
and turning it up and down if we're not singing and breathing from the right spot. So like I said, plenty of videos on that. Notice that we're breathing down here into the diaphragm. You can always put a hand on the diaphragm and practice breathing and keeping that hand there while you're singing, while you're doing scales, whatever you're doing. Keep operating like this and, and reminding yourself to breathe down here. That is pretty much one of the most important things is that, that reminder, once again, that seed planted in the mind so that if 10 minutes go by while you're practicing, you're like, oh yeah, am I breathing correctly? And then eventually a month later, it might be five minutes to go by. Oh yeah, breathe down here. That's what we're doing. So breathing from down here, then we're learning how to support. We're learning how to rest on the diaphragm uh, and we're learning how to lightly push and then up to heavier pushing when we wanna get louder or whatever it is what we're doing. Not everybody needs a completely heavy, you know, support all the time. But finding it right under the sternum, right here, we're starting to find a push down. Uh, rem remember, I have plenty of videos on this, but if you lie down on the ground and you start picking your head up off the ground while making a tone or making a note, uh, you're going to have support. You're going to feel this push down into the diaphragm. It's not a matter of just tightening the stomach. It's a matter of pushing down into the stomach. Now, when we put those things together, we should be able to sing a couple notes, one at a time, five at a time, three at a time. Let's take three. And we're going to try to consistently get the jaw and everything out of the way. And we're going uh, to make that pressure. We're going to build that pressure from here up onto the hard palate. So meaning everything else gets the hell out of the way. Uh, do the most simple thing you can do, the most relaxed vowel sound, whatever, in terms of this right now, we're just doing, ah, uh, so that we go, ah, uh, and drop the jaw like that, right? Comatose. Uh, hey, sorry, I can't hear my piano. Sorry, let me turn it up. Hold on. Hey, 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 Once again, easy enough, take the same exercise. And once, do you feel that? Do you hear your tonality? Do you hear a tone that is, do you hear it more nasal? Do you hear it more tw twangy? Do you hear it more bright? What do you hear? It should be relatively gentle, relaxed, and up on that hard palate somewhere. Again, imagine your vocal cords where they are here, and they're pointing and shooting that pressure like a laser pointer somewhere in the mouth. Remember, you can be more pharyngeal by pointing that laser backwards. Uh, I tend to do that in my singing because it relaxes my voice, and the more nasal you become as you go higher, the more you're taking the pressure off of the throat and moving it up to here. But you might be more, ah, and you're starting to do this. Uh, I see a lot of singers like that. Ken Tamplin is a big vocal coach online and he's always talking about ping is king and this big open oh my god I, I i don't understand how he does that and i don't understand how people sing like that it's about relaxation and about trying to loosen up and i'm not just taking a dig at him uh, he can sing a whole bunch of stuff and he's a great teacher i've bought some of his courses but in my case i don't do that um, we're finding a relaxed position and in a relaxed tone. The more you go like this and open up, the more you're shooting the sound out of the mouth and the more our tone is lost. So essentially, if you barely open the mouth, uh, you're actually going to hear more of the resonance of my skull, the nasal space, everything like that. Then if I was to go, ah, you hear more of, a little bit of the neck right here. You hear some other things, but once again, I've just lost a lot of tonality. That doesn't mean everybody has to sing like this all the time, but keep that in mind. We're finding, and we're working right now on finding a tone and then starting to run with that. So again, taking your vowels, we're not gonna go through all the vowels. I don't have enough time to do that. And you can always join me on Patreon if you wanna take these things further. I teach more over there than I do over here. But let's take something like A again. A up on the top. A one more. A now let's take it to an, a difficult vowel like E. 
Do you hear how mine still has the same warmth and consistency? If you're shaping that vowel and changing the way that you're relaxed into that that sound, it starts changing into that same ah, like that same bright odd thing. Your placement has now gone from ah, just from that small movement and then that small enunciation difference right there. So you know you can get further into those things with vowel enunci, you know, with uh, vowel modification stuff like that. But it's not completely necessary because we're just paying attention to the body. We're paying attention to what sounds good or what works and what doesn't. What's taking your voice and just taking it from ah uh, and then moving it in a, a different different direction? Where are you losing track of your tone? So, um, a couple more times. You should be able to lower this jaw. I I I I How about you? You You If you practice exercises like this you're also going to start to notice when you get higher in your range what needs to happen and what needs to shift because if you start to go and you get tense like this and your body starts to like this, you're going to have compounding tension, compounding interest, and it's going to get worse and worse. And then you have to remind yourself again about building a foundation based on your body, your tone, and your placement. So as I go up here, I have to keep myself almost exactly the same. I'm actually moving backwards further than again this ping. Ah, that tends to go like this. You see my body uh, change immediately when I do that. Ah, once again, I should be able to. Ah, 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 ah. I should have almost the same kind of physicality here. Make sense? Now. Let's take this, I'm going to throw it into um, some kind of maybe song, and I'm going to show you one of these things, and like I said, one of the main reasons I brought this video up is not because, not just because um, this is some of the main stuff I'm trying to get my students to do, but also because it was definitely helpful for me when you write a song, and when you sit down, and you're not trying to mimic or anything like that, but you're trying to sound like you, and you know, that can be very difficult, because what do you sound like? Um, one of the things that shined through for me was catching on to this tone of mine. What's something that's mine? You know, not like I said, like I know I sound a lot like Chris Cornell, which is, you know, it's cool, but I don't want to sit down and sing one of my songs and be like, I just tap into how he sounds. And then I said, that sucks. <laughs> so um, trying to find out what my voice wants to do and then starting to sing a song and then getting into a mic hearing myself well enough and whatnot, and then tapping into that tonality and then just continuing that tonality. At first, it might seem like you're in a tunnel or you're coloring your sound too much, but as we get better at this and you make decisions along the way, it'll get better. But if I take something like, speaking of Chris Cornell, if I take something like Outshined, I did this with a student not too long ago. Let's put on reverb and make it sound like we're professional people. Let's take it way down too. So if I can launch from one place here. Ah, ah, nice and relaxed. Pushing from the diaphragm up on the top. Ah, and then I'm gonna carry everything else through that space. I'm gonna keep trying to get that tone to stay there. I'm gonna listen for it, I'm gonna feel it. Can you feel it now, Mr. Krabs? I got a feeling so down. I got a feeling so down. I kept the movie rolling. The story's getting old now. Oh, yeah. Now, whether you think that's the greatest thing you ever heard, or whether you think it's subpar or it's this or that, doesn't actually matter. One of the best things about learning how to do this on a physical level, like what you just heard me do, 
is that I'm not sitting there judging every second of it. I'm not sitting there trying to control it and color it and make it more pleasing or trying to do all these runs or anything like that. What I'm doing is I'm physically finding a tonality and a feeling, and then I'm replicating that throughout the entire passage or the whole entire song of what I'm singing. So if somebody's like, can you sing something for me? I actually am not turning on all the vulnerable, like, ah, you know? <laughs> I'm able to tap into it like a muscular movement. It's once again, I, I keep making this analogy, but it's similar to if somebody told you to do curls, let's say you go and uh, you're doing curls in the gym and somebody that's, uh, you know, maybe way smaller than you that's never worked out before is like, can you show me how to do this? Part of you is probably going to think about it or whatever, and you're going to try to have good posture or whatnot, but you're mostly going to go by instinct and remembering what the muscular movement should feel like, what to engage, what your posture should be like, etc. Then let's say a trainer comes up to you and does it. This is what happens to most people when they sing anything. It's like a trainer is watching, and you're just like, hey, I got to do that. And then like, everything just becomes kind of this... This, am I doing it right? Am I doing this right? I should be standing. I don't know if I just, you forget the muscular movement. You forget how well your body knows how to do this thing that you've done hopefully a whole bunch of times. And you're instantly judging yourself on all these different levels. But if you have done it enough times, almost as you could close your eyes and know that your form is right because you can feel it. That's what you're trying to do with these things is you're trying to get to a place on a muscle memory level meaning you've done it so many times that your body remembers how to do it. In this case, the thing I try to teach the most in terms of foundation is get your breathing down, get your placement down, get your diaphragmatic support down. Build a foundation based on those things so that the basement or the foundation of your house is concrete and you can jump into something like this without the hesitation and the fear and the vulnerability and the do I sound good and do I... <laughs> You can get there and you can do that and you can put your soul into it and emotion, but you can barely put soul and meaning and feeling into something if you're doing the judgment and the thing and you're balancing this out and you're trying to think about the sound and you're trying to think it's just too much shit. And I'll say this again. I had a drum teacher uh, that's a friend of mine. And I only had a couple lessons, but I remember him trying to teach me some crazy like five over four type of fill or something. And I remember asking him, well, how the fuck do like when do I, when do I get to a point where I can like enjoy this and I'm not sitting here on stage playing this, having to count and think about it. And he was like, you do this so many times that your body remembers how to do it. And then afterwards, you're free to express through it or whatever. God knows many of you that have performed have been outside of yourself while performing and it's the craziest thing ever you're basically almost out of your body like man i'm hungry right now well the set's almost over that's cool i've been doing this for 45 it's crazy so you you do these things enough so that your body remembers it so like i said um that's one of the main things i wanted to talk about finding your tonality carrying it through finding um that kind of main golden thing that you can go through Remember that as you go higher, your tone is going to change, things are going to change, and then you might find another pocket or a tonality that, that comes along with your higher voice or something like that. But for right now, just keep going with that same kind of thing, finding that continuity, and, uh, and I think it'll help you tremendously. And like I said, then if somebody says, sing something, you don't have to think about all the crazy fear and anxiety. You can just go with what your body does, just like the gym. Ah, if you can launch from there, just sing everything right from there. Does that make sense? I hope it makes a little bit of sense. Um, I will still, I'm actually going on a small tour here again um, to play some drums, but I'm going to keep trying to do videos and make more stuff. Uh, hopefully, as my voice is working <laughs> the next few days, I can make a video about uh, Journey. I made one recently about how to sing like a stone and was adding all kinds of information about how the voice works for that kind of stuff. So uh, thanks for joining in. And um, I will see you soon.